Story 1. It all began on one of those frosty morning hours when winter still holds the world under its cold dominion, yet the premonition of spring could already be felt. I woke up not to the alarm, which for many mornings in a row mercilessly tore me away from the embrace of sleep, but to an unusual sound for our quiet neighborhood. It was the hum of a truck, stopping on the street right in front of my house. Unable to resist curiosity, I left the warmth of my bed to unravel the mystery of this morning visitor. From the bed, I rolled onto my feet, rubbing my eyes out of habit, and approached the window. Rays of morning light penetrated through the blinds, softly illuminating the room, creating a sense of coziness and warmth even on these frosty days. Outside, our neighborhood unfolded, which always seemed to me like a small island of comfort and tranquility amidst the noisy and bustling city. The narrow streets along which houses were built reminded of times long past when construction was carried out not for practicality, but for beauty and comfort. The trees, though bare, waiting for their time to bloom, added a picturesque quality to the landscape. The sky was gray, as is often the case in winter, but the air was surprisingly fresh and clean, as it only happens in those rare moments when winter momentarily forgets about its severity. Opposite my house was the one that had been vacant for a long time. The previous neighbors were not just residents across the way, they were part of our small community. They had a knack for gathering people around them, creating an atmosphere of hospitality and warmth. Their parties, which the entire neighborhood attended, became legendary, and their involvement in community life left no one indifferent. When they moved out, it seemed something was lost in our neighborhood, leaving behind a sense of emptiness. And now, after almost half a year, I watched the new neighbor, who seemed to have come to fill this void. Tall and muscular, his appearance could not go unnoticed. Apparently, he was a man accustomed to physical labor, perhaps even finding pleasure in it. His age, which I estimated to be over 40, gave him an appearance of maturity, experience, and confidence. His clothing, practical and unassuming, suggested that he does not seek to stand out, but rather simply lives his life. I lingered at the window, lost in thought about how our small community would change with the arrival of this new person. Was he a family man? Did he enjoy hosting parties or did he prefer solitude? Several questions swirled in my mind, but I decided not to rush things. Time would reveal who he was and his story. Returning to my morning routines, I prepared my coffee with a different sentiment, pondering the day ahead. The new neighbor had introduced a note of intrigue into the usual order of our lives, and I looked forward to seeing how events would unfold. As you may have gathered, I am a very observant person. My observance has always been part of my essence. The ability to see beyond surface details to the deep traits of human character. It has helped me not only in personal relationships, but also in the professional realm. The skill to analyze colleagues' behavior, predict their reactions, and find an approach to a variety of personalities gave me an edge in interactions and helped establish connections that were not just useful, but enriched my life. There was never a shortage of friends in my circle, and I sincerely believed that the more, the better. However, despite my attentiveness to people's behavior, I overlooked the strange events that began to unfold around me. Perhaps this was because the last few months had been consumed by work. Days merged into a continuous sequence of deadlines and tasks requiring immediate resolution. Reports for the previous months, market analysis, budget planning for the upcoming period, all of it weighed heavily on my shoulders, leaving no time for rest or contemplation. I forgot about eating, sleeping, and even simple human joys like socializing with friends. By the end of February, 
my capacity for work had reached its limit. Headaches became my constant companions, a reminder that a person cannot work endlessly without rest. And on one such evening, when my head was splitting with pain, I decided to step out onto the porch of my house to breathe in some fresh air. The air was cool but not cold, with a light harbinger of spring already beginning to awaken in the earth and air. The stars twinkled in the sky, creating an illusion of calm and serenity. I took a deep breath, trying to free my mind from the incessant stream of thoughts about work. At that moment, my attention was drawn to something strange in the house opposite. At first, I thought my eyes were deceiving me due to fatigue. But as I focused my gaze, I saw that in one of the windows facing me, there were intermittent flashes of light. These flashes were irregular and brief, as if someone was turning the light on and off in the room with unpredictable frequency. Each time the light flashed, it revealed a tall figure standing by the window. It was my new neighbor, and his appearance in such a strange and motionless pose evoked in me a mix of curiosity and undefined fear. His hands were lowered along his body, and he stood absolutely still, as if he were part of an exhibition in a wax museum. But the strangest was his behavior. At one moment he would start to rapidly and jerkily turn his head from side to side, as if trying to catch something in the darkness of the night, or as though he was in a state of extreme agitation or fright. This scene froze me in place, forgetting about the cold that had previously penetrated my clothes and the headache that had tormented me just moments ago. I became a witness to something incredible and at the same time terrifying. Suddenly, as if sensing my gaze, the figure stopped and slowly turned its face towards the window. What I saw next exceeded all my expectations for the night. Although the distance between our houses was significant, and the night hid most details, I could swear that at that moment, my neighbor's eyes glowed in the dark, like two bright headlights. This light seemed unnatural, inhuman. He was not just looking in my direction. He was looking right at me. The gaze was so intense and piercing that it seemed as if he could see me through the walls and the distance separating our houses. I stood, rooted to the spot, unable to tear myself away from this spectacle, until the light in his window finally went out, leaving me in indecision and confusion. My heart pounded in my ears, and my mind tried to find a logical explanation for what I had seen. Questions swirled in my head. What was that? Why was my neighbor behaving so strangely? And most importantly, what did his gaze mean? Admitting to my fear did not come easily to me. I had always considered myself to be steadfast and decisive, but that night showed me that even the most confident among us are not immune to the terror of the unknown. Returning inside, I felt my muscles tense and a whirlwind of thoughts and speculations about what could have happened in the neighboring house began to swirl in my head. The night, which had previously seemed an oasis of silence and peace, suddenly transformed into an arena of my inner struggles and fears. I felt like a participant in something inexplicable, and this feeling would not let me rest. Trying to muster courage, I turned off the light in my room to once again look at the house opposite through the darkness of the night hoping that the light anomalies had disappeared and everything had returned to its normal state. Standing by the window in complete darkness, I strained my eyes trying to discern any details in the black outline of the house opposite. The light show that had captured my attention just minutes before had indeed stopped. Complete darkness reigned outside the windows and no signs of life were observable. This observation brought me some relief, and I was able to take a deep breath trying to calm my racing heart. That night sleep was hard to come by, 
Thoughts about my neighbor's strange behavior and the mysterious light effects in his house prevented me from relaxing. However, lying in bed and staring into the darkness, I made a decision. I resolved not to jump to any hasty conclusions about what had happened. After all, it was entirely possible that there was a logical and simple explanation for all this, which I could only find out by talking to the neighbor. I decided that the next day I would try to meet him, to introduce myself, and perhaps subtly bring up the topic of the previous night. Maybe this would allow me to find answers to the questions that had been troubling me and dispel my fears. This decision gave me confidence and I gradually began to calm down, allowing fatigue to take over and carry me into the realm of sleep. The next day, gathering my courage and reminding myself of the importance of personal interaction to dispel doubts and fears, I made my way to my neighbor's house. All the events of the previous night now seemed like a distant and not so terrifying dream but echoes of past fear still resonated within me as a quiet echo. A feeling of unease had been replaced by a strange nausea, and my appetite had vanished, leaving me in a state of slight disorientation. Reaching my neighbor's door, I paused for a moment, trying to collect my thoughts and calm my racing heart. Taking a deep breath, I knocked. The sounds of my knocks seemed exceptionally loud in the quiet of the morning. Footsteps from inside the house made my heart beat even faster. With each approaching step, I felt the tension within me build, despite my attempts to convince myself otherwise. When the door finally opened, I found myself face to face with the tall, muscular man I had already formed an opinion of based on his appearance and the strange events of the previous night. A look of mild surprise crossed his face at my unexpected visit. I introduced myself, trying to hide my nervousness and inner tension. To my surprise, the neighbor turned out to be extremely friendly and welcoming. He not only warmly invited me in, but also offered me tea, thus creating an atmosphere of warmth and hospitality in his home. Inside, his dwelling was cozy and spacious, with a pleasant interior that spoke of the owner's good taste. During our conversation, which unfolded over cups of aromatic tea, the neighbor told me about himself. He indeed was an engineer working for one of the major private companies. This conversation allowed me to view my neighbor in a new light. All his words and behavior dissipated my initial fears and prejudices. As our dialogue developed, I gradually began to feel more relaxed and confident. The nausea and nervousness that had accompanied me on my way to his house slowly gave way to curiosity and interest in his personality and life. As our interaction continued, I discovered even more remarkable qualities in my new neighbor. His talkativeness was infectious and soon we moved from simple greetings to deeper and more meaningful topics. Our discussion ranged from everyday matters to complex engineering problems, allowing me to see the breadth of his interests and knowledge. He was not only tall and muscular, but also possessed an intellect that instantly commanded my respect. In his presence, I felt somewhat diminished, not just physically, but also because of the depth of his knowledge and experience. However, this feeling was more motivating than oppressive. His ease of communication and openness made our dialogue pleasant and effortless, despite the nervousness and bias I had brought with me. After the conversation had moved far beyond my initial assumptions about his character, I finally found the courage to ask about the events of the previous night. His reaction to my question was instantaneous a surprise that flickered in his eyes which seemed sincere to me. However, his explanation that he often trains at night seemed perfectly logical to me. After all, who was I to judge someone's habits or hobbies, even if they appeared somewhat unusual? Leaving his house, I felt a sense of lightness and satisfaction for having taken this step. 
Getting to know my neighbor not only dispelled my own doubts and fears, but also broadened my circle of acquaintances. We parted with warm smiles and a promise to talk again. As I walked home, I reflected on how easily we can create prejudices about people based on limited information or external manifestations without trying to delve deeper. I thought to myself, people can be different. And just because he trains deep into the night doesn't mean he's some kind of oddity to worry about. However, at the time, I didn't realize just how profoundly I was actually mistaken. Returning home after meeting with my neighbor, I felt a surge of energy and inspiration for work. This feeling helped me to focus and complete one of the most important and challenging tasks, the annual report. Work consumed me entirely, and only late in the evening did I finally send the completed document to management. I felt the tension of many days leave my shoulders, giving way to a sense of completion and satisfaction. Calm and tired, I went to sleep, expecting the night to bring me well-deserved rest. However, peace was short-lived. That night, I was visited by a nightmare so vivid and alive that its echo stayed with me even after waking. In the dream, I found myself in an unknown and gloomy place, where a tense and anxious atmosphere reigned. My new neighbor appeared in the dream not alone, but accompanied by a huge dog of a gray, ashen color, which resembled more a wolf than a dog. In the dream, my reality was distorted. The world around me was warped and incomprehensible, and space seemed both infinite and enclosed at the same time. The neighbor and his companion began a pursuit that quickly turned into a hunt. A hunt for me. I tried to run away, but my movements seemed slowed, as if I were running through a thick, viscous liquid. The harder I tried to speed up, the more immobilized I felt. The neighbor and his beast alternated between human and wolf forms, creating a sense of chaos and uncertainty. Their faces and shapes blurred, transitioning from one image to another, in the shimmering mist of my nightmare. They came closer and closer, their steps becoming more distinct, their breathing more audible. The apex of fear came when I found myself on the edge of a bottomless pit. Looking back and seeing my pursuers approaching, I lost my balance and fell into the abyss. The wind whistled in my ears, and the darkness around me became thicker and thicker. The fall seemed eternal. I plummeted downwards, engulfed by a sense of absolute terror and despair. The fear of the unknown and the anticipation of the inevitable impact with the ground filled every second of the fall. I woke up in a cold sweat, my heart pounding wildly in my chest. For a moment I felt as though I was still falling, unable to understand where I was or what had happened. Breathing was difficult, as if someone was squeezing my chest. The room seemed foreign and the darkness around threatening. It took me some time to calm down, collect my thoughts, and remember that I was in my own bed, in my own house, and that the horror I had just experienced was only a dream. I sat up, pressing a hand to my chest, trying to calm my racing heart. After calming down, the decision to drink water seemed like the best way to restore my internal equilibrium. The thought that all the experiences were merely the result of stress and lack of sleep seemed reasonable. However, despite these attempts at self-reassurance, a sense of unease lingered in the air like fog, unwilling to dissipate. In the kitchen, standing in front of the sink and filling a glass with water, I mechanically turned to the window. My gaze involuntarily drifted towards my neighbor's house, where the same flickering light flashed in the darkness again. This time, no one was visible outside the window, which only heightened the sense of uncertainty. However, straining my eyes, I noticed the silhouette of my neighbor in the darkness near his house. He stood, resembling a huge, menacing shadow, 
motionless except for his head, which jerkily moved from side to side. And suddenly, as if sensing my gaze, he froze and looked straight at me. Even through the distance and darkness, I felt that he saw me as clearly as I saw him. Unable to tear myself away from this spectacle, I tried to understand what was happening. At that moment, the tense silence was shattered by a sharp ring of the phone. I flinched, and the glass of water slipped from my hands, shattering on the floor. The sound of breaking glass echoed in the silence of the kitchen, water spreading in all directions, soaking the floor. But I barely noticed it, hurrying to answer the call. My heart raced in anticipation of something unknown as I picked up the receiver. However, I heard nothing but silence. My heart raced anxiously and trying to overcome the sudden surge of anxiety. I loudly asked into the phone, who is calling me at night, hoping to hear a response. But instead, a beast's deep growl followed. My imagination, already stirred by the recent nightmare, instantly painted a picture in my mind of a dog or wolf lurking in the shadows. I hastily fell silent, turned off the phone, and trying to compose myself, approached the window again. I found the street empty. Neither the neighbor nor his ominous shadow remained. Only emptiness and the night, which seemed to have become even deeper and darker. A sense of unease enveloped me chilling me and making me doubt my own safety even within my home. I tried to gather my thoughts. What was that? A coincidence or a warning? My heart pounded wildly, and my mind refused to accept what had happened as reality. But the more I thought, the colder the grip of incomprehension and fear of the unknown that the night harbored wrapped around me. After a night full of anxiety and restlessness, I concluded that before taking any decisive steps, I should observe my neighbor's behavior more closely. Perhaps my fears and the entire atmosphere of mystery that surrounded me were merely the product of my overactive imagination. Despite feeling tired from the sleepless night, I went to work, trying to give my day the usual rhythm and order. The office, usually perceived as a familiar and routine place, felt foreign and even hostile that day. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me. This sense of being followed lingered, creating the illusion that my neighbor was somewhere nearby, that he stood around every corner, invisibly observing me. Every rustle, every unexpected sound made me start and turn around, trying to catch an elusive presence. Goosebumps ran down my spine at the thought that my suspicions could be reality, that I was indeed under constant surveillance. From time to time, I raised my eyes, scanning the faces of colleagues passing by. The workday turned into an ordeal. Attempts to distract myself and immerse in usual tasks failed one after another. My thoughts were far away outside the office, swirling around the inexplicable and unsettling. Each time I lifted my gaze from the computer monitor, it seemed I might catch a shadow or reflection of my neighbor's figure. But each time it was just a figment of my imagination. Lunch break brought no relief. Sitting alone at a table in the cafeteria, I felt even more vulnerable. All the surrounding glances seemed evaluating, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being followed. This feeling continued to grow, turning every minute spent in the office into a trial. Returning to my workstation, I tried to focus on the upcoming tasks, but my thoughts were elsewhere. I caught myself checking my mail and social networks, not so much out of professional necessity, but in the hope of not finding anything related to him. My attempts to delve into work were interrupted by sudden surges of anxiety and I repeatedly found my gaze slipping to the window, checking if someone was there watching me. By the end of the workday, my state of tension had peaked. I barely restrained the urge to constantly look back as I left the office. 
The way home turned into a marathon of obstacles, where every shadow seemed ominous, and every random glance from passers-by felt like his gaze. At home, within the relative safety of my own walls, I allowed myself to relax a bit. But the feeling that I had become the object of attention, of someone's invisible presence, did not leave me. It was hard to admit, but I realized that this story with my neighbor was affecting me more than I could have imagined. Gradually, I felt my thoughts slipping into the abyss of paranoia. It was inevitable, as if I were dragging myself down into a deep, dark well, where rational doubts mixed with irrational fear. Perhaps I had become the architect of this prison, building walls out of guesses and assumptions about a neighbor who might have been just an ordinary person. Yet something inside me screamed that my safety was hanging by a thread. That day, I acted on a survival instinct. I locked the door with all the locks and left a baseball bat next to my bed. This decision brought mixed feelings within me. On one hand, laughter at the absurdity the situation had reached, and on the other, sadness from realizing that my actions could be futile in the face of a real threat. Could I really use the baseball bat? Would I have enough strength and courage? These questions circled in my mind, reminding me of my own doubts about my ability to protect myself if a real threat arose. As the sky began to paint itself with the colors of sunset, turning day into evening, my anxiety reached its peak. I felt like a beast trapped in a cage of my own fears, unable to tear myself away from the window through which the world outside seemed both familiar and alien. Twilight, in my perception, has always been a time of change, when day gives way to night and reality to shadows and doubts. This evening, they took on an especially troubling hue. I stood by the window, my eyes unconsciously scanning the street until they rested on the figure of my neighbor. His appearance was sudden, as if he had emerged from the very essence of the sunset, blending with the soft shadows of the evening light. Next to him walked a dog, precisely the one that had appeared in my nightmares. This vision struck me, causing an instant paralysis. Gray, powerful, it moved with the same unflappability as its owner. My breath halted when the neighbor suddenly stopped and turned his face towards me. It seemed he felt that I was watching him. That moment felt like an eternity in which I was completely exposed to his gaze. He waved at me. His smile was calm and it seemed friendly. But that smile did not reach his eyes, in which I read an unfathomable depth. The dog, however, continued to look at me motionlessly. Its gaze was incredibly focused and sharp, as if it was not an animal, but a sentient being. I jumped back from the window as if stung. Alarming thoughts about truly becoming the object of someone's heightened interest echoed in my mind. Questions cascaded one after another. Why did he look at me that way? What did his greeting mean? And what about the dog? A simple coincidence or something more? My heart pounded wildly, and my hands shook involuntarily. I realized that my safety was something I needed to care for, not just in dreams, but in reality as well. The baseball bat by the bed suddenly didn't seem such an ironic precaution anymore. Deep down, I began to understand that the line between reality and paranoia was becoming thinner with every glance towards that house, with every rustle of the evening wind. Lying in my bed, I felt anxiety and fear fill every corner of my room, making the air dense and heavy to breathe. I lay there, staring at the ceiling, where darkness merged with the flickering light of street lamps penetrating through the curtains. In my imagination, scenarios of what could happen alternated with cinematic speed. I envisioned approaching the phone, dialing the police and trying to explain my situation. 
but what would I say? Listen, there's a creepy neighbor living next to me with a scary dog. They haven't done anything to me, but they scare me to death. Help me. In my mind's eye, I saw skeptical looks, heard skeptical questions, and felt even more alone and unprotected. How can they understand? I asked myself. How can I explain the inexpressible? Something I barely understand myself. The hours relentlessly passed, and my anxiety grew like a flame in a windless night. I would jump out of bed, approach the window, draw back the curtain, and try to discern anything in the darkness. But the street was empty. Only the light from the lamps cast strange shadows on the asphalt, which my imagination turned into new and new threats. It seemed that the night would never end. My attempts to fall asleep were in vain. Every time I was on the verge of sleep, my mind returned to the same anxious thoughts. They swirled in my head like a whirlwind, carrying me further away from peace and tranquility. And yet, despite all this inner turmoil, fatigue eventually took over. I fell asleep, but my sleep was troubled and full of restless visions. I dreamt I was in a deep, narrow tunnel where the light was only a faint flicker in the distance. The dream felt so realistic that the line between reality and fiction seemed blurred. The air here was heavy and cold. With each breath I felt the cold penetrate my lungs, causing discomfort and anxiety. The tunnel walls seemed damp and slippery to the touch when I instinctively reached out, trying to find support or at least understand what they were made of. My neighbor, in the dream, took on even more terrifying features. He chased me with his dog, which seemed to transform back and forth between a huge wolf and its normal appearance. The escape through the tunnel seemed endless. I tried to reach the light at its end, but with every step, the exit seemed further and further away. This strange effect made me feel hopeless, as if I had fallen into a trap with no escape. The steps behind me grew louder, and the growling and howling of the wolf filled the tunnel space, inducing panic fear in me. The cries for help I uttered seemed soundless. My words dissolved into the darkness, finding no response. This amplified the feeling of loneliness and despair. My attempts to escape my pursuers became more desperate, but the tunnel seemed to mock me, stretching further and further. And when I felt that my strength was leaving me, and my pursuers were about to catch up with me, I realized that it was all just a dream. With this realization came the desire to wake up, which I felt with my entire being. The struggle to awaken was hard, but eventually I managed to open my eyes. In the first moments I couldn't understand whether the nightmare was continuing or if I was already safe in my bedroom. My breathing was heavy and ragged. My heart pounded so hard that its beats echoed in my ears. I lay still for a few seconds, trying to orient myself in reality. Gradually, as the initial panic began to subside, I felt a strange and anxious premonition. My bedroom suddenly seemed foreign and hostile. The darkness in the corners of the room appeared denser than usual, and I felt utterly vulnerable in the face of an unknown threat. I felt I was not alone. And then, my heart froze in terror when I suddenly realized that the silhouette at the head of my bed was not a figment of my imagination. It was him, my neighbor, standing beside me with his dog, smiling. But he was not as I had seen him before. His appearance was distorted in my eyes. Tall, muscular, covered in fur, with eyes burning with a predatory fire. At that moment he was not just a man. He appeared before me as a creature from my worst nightmare. Fear paralyzed me so much that I couldn't make the slightest movement. A scream stuck in my throat, and only fragmented thoughts of how to protect myself 
what to do next, flashed through my mind. The moment seemed to stretch into eternity, until I realized that my only defense was action. With trembling hands, I turned on the light. The distortion of reality disappeared, and the room appeared empty before me. There was no werewolf neighbor, no frightening dog. Only I was there, drenched in sweat that had seized my body, and the bat lying next to the bed, a reminder that the fear had real grounds. Breathing gradually became smoother, but the anxiety did not disappear. It was with me, in my room, in my house, in my consciousness. With every step down the stairs, my heart pounded louder and louder as if trying to burst out of my chest. Thoughts whirled chaotically in my head, but one stood out more brightly than the rest. I need to call the police. At that moment, I didn't think about the rationality of my actions. The fear I experienced was too real to ignore. Whether it was a continuation of my nightmare or the neighbor had actually infiltrated my home no longer mattered. I felt I was on the verge between sanity and madness, where every decision seemed both right and absurd. I stopped in the middle of the living room, feeling cold drafts glide over my skin. The darkness outside the window seemed almost physically tangible and the silence in the house suddenly filled with thousands of invisible eyes watching me. I wanted to scream, to break through this veil of ignorance and fear, but I understood that my cry would drown in this bottomless silence, finding no response. The thought of calling the police fluttered in my head, like a moth around a lamp. But every time I was ready to pick up the phone, the thought of how it would look to others stopped me. How to explain that your fears stem from a dream in which your neighbor turns into a werewolf? It seemed that even attempting to articulate this aloud sounded like madness. And what would they say if I admitted that it seemed this nightmare had penetrated my reality? Even I couldn't be a hundred percent sure of it. Enough echoed in my head. I was certain it was time to end this mad game of fear and uncertainty. Step by step, I approached the phone, each movement filled with the resolve to inform the police about everything happening. My hand was ready to grab the receiver when it suddenly came to life in my hands, ringing so unexpectedly that I nearly dropped it from the shock. The call sounded like thunder on a clear day, making my heart freeze in fear. Initially, I didn't even want to pick up the receiver, but the ringing persisted, becoming more insistent and demanding with each tone. Finally, gathering my courage, I cautiously lifted the receiver. The voice that answered was rough and low, more like a growl than human speech. Oops, I'm already here. These words, accompanied by demonic laughter, pierced through me, pushing my internal tension to the limit. Thoughts started racing through my head. What to do? How to protect myself? Where to run? My attention was so focused on the sounds coming from the phone that I didn't notice the subtle rustling behind me that infiltrated the room's space. When I finally heard it, my heart skipped a beat. I whirled around swinging the bat with all my might, ready to fend off an invisible enemy. But there was no one. Only the emptiness of the room stared back at me, as if mocking my fears. The silence that followed seemed even louder and more threatening than all the sounds that had filled my house before. I stood in the middle of the living room, holding the bat, feeling bewildered, the air in the house vibrated with an invisible presence. So tangible it felt as though I could touch it by reaching out my hand. With each step I took, trying to move away from the phone, the sense of my neighbor's proximity became stronger. My imagination painted his figure in every shadow around every corner, as if he was indeed everywhere and nowhere at the same time. My breath halted in my chest at the thought that he might suddenly appear before me, and I wouldn't even have time to react. 
when a growl similar to the sound made by a beast from the depths of my nightmares suddenly filled the air. My body acted on autopilot. The decision to run to the basement came instinctively, as if the deeper layers of my consciousness knew that only there would I find refuge. I dashed through the house, pursued, my heart beating in time with my steps, and fear overshadowing everything else. Passing by the kitchen, I saw it, the large gray dog, which seemed to have grown out of the night itself to become the guardian of my flight. It sat motionless, like a statue, and its eyes followed me, full of unfathomable knowledge. That moment froze in time. The fear I felt was so powerful that my legs nearly failed me. But the instinct for self-preservation proved stronger, and I threw the bat towards the dog, rushing to the saving darkness of the basement. As I descended the stairs, it seemed the neighbor, no, the werewolf, was breathing down my neck. I felt something cold glide over my skin before I slammed the basement door behind me. My heart pounded wildly as I gasped for air. I immediately began to barricade the door with boxes. Every movement was filled with wild, animalistic fear and determination not to let the horror enter. The darkness in the basement was absolute. I stood there, enveloped in darkness, trying to calm the frantic rhythm of my heart. I realized this was only a temporary refuge, but at the same time I saw no other way out. My mind buzzed with questions about what to do next, how to survive the night, and what awaited me beyond the basement door when I finally dared to open it. My lungs constricted with every heavy breath, the air seeming saturated with despair. Sweat ran down my face, merging with the drops that had long soaked my clothes. My legs trembled not so much from fatigue as from the relentless tension I had been in for an unknown amount of time. Seconds dragged slowly, turning into minutes, which in turn seemed an eternity to me. I expected the basement door to start creaking under the pressure of my elusive pursuer, but nothing happened. No sound of footsteps, not a single rustle. Absolute silence enveloped me creating the illusion that I was outside of time and space. All my fears, all the tension, seemed to reach its peak when I heard his whisper. It was so unexpected that I jumped as if shocked. See you soon! These words sounded right in my head, as if the neighbor had found a way to infiltrate my most secret thoughts. This moment became the culmination of my horror. At the moment when I had started to think that maybe all this was just the fruit of my overactive imagination, the whisper sounded like a verdict. My fears were confirmed, and I realized that fleeing to the basement was not a solution to the problem. I sat in the darkness, trying to gather my thoughts and emotions. The basement, which seemed to me the last refuge, now rather resembled a prison cell. I understood that sooner or later, I would have to get out. But how? Every cell of my body resisted this thought, anticipating new fears that awaited me outside. After an endlessly long night spent in the basement, surrounded by darkness and my own fears, the first rays of morning seemed like salvation. With difficulty, gathering the remnants of my will, I finally moved the boxes and slowly opened the door, ready to face new challenges. Emerging from the basement, I felt relief at having freed myself from its oppressive walls. But the apprehension of the upcoming meeting with the police did not leave me. With each step towards the nearest police station, I mulled over how to explain everything that had happened. My thoughts were confused, and I could hardly concentrate on how to present my story plausibly and coherently. It seemed to me they wouldn't believe but I knew I had to tell about the neighbor who had invaded my living space. As the police began to search the neighbor's house, I watched from afar as other residents of our area gathered around. They looked on with bewilderment and curiosity, not understanding the reason for such attention from law enforcement, 
to what seemed like a normal house. I tried to explain to them that all this was because of the new neighbor, who had brought so much anxiety and fear into my life. But the responses from some of the neighbors stopped me in my tracks. No one ever moved into that house. The old neighbors haven't sold it yet. It's still up for sale. These words sounded to me like a verdict. Everything I had experienced, all my fears and emotions, moments of horror and despair, all of it instantly brought me to a standstill. So, the new neighbor never existed. There was no man or werewolf who had burst into my world, turning it upside down. How could it be that my nightmare, my encounters, and even pursuits were merely the fruit of my imagination? Or was everything I saw and heard real? Story 2 This happened last year. I then got a job as a security guard at a private laboratory. I worked alone on the night shift. They paid well and I was satisfied. The laboratory was equipped with cameras and an alarm system, and for the first two days, I sat in the security booth for hours, just watching the corridors through the monitor screen. Sometimes out of boredom, I would patrol the area, but I rarely entered the laboratory itself. On the fifth day of my work, strange things started happening in the laboratory. During a patrol of the area, I came across a flock of burned birds, and on the sixth day of my duty, I saw rats running out of the building, as if they were scared of something. I told the director about everything. He said that I should not worry. Two days later, I learned that another night shift security guard had quit, and I was asked to temporarily replace him. There were no reasons to refuse, and that evening, I went to work. I was greeted by a familiar cleaner. She handed me the keys and looked at me strangely. After midnight, as usual, I went on a tour of the territory. On this day, there was a full moon, and the night was brighter than usual. When I approached the laboratory, I felt a strong smell of smoke. This worried me. The first thing I thought was that there was a fire in the building, however. It turned out to be a false alarm. Everything in the laboratory was in order. But the smell of smoke continued to haunt me, even when I returned to the security booth. The worst thing was that over time, the unpleasant smell became stronger. The smell stopped chasing me only after I left the clinic's territory. In the evening, I returned to duty again and again met the cleaner. She silently handed me the keys, but continued to look at me strangely. And to my surprise, she suddenly asked why I had not quit yet. I replied honestly that I was satisfied with everything. During a night patrol, I discovered that one of the exterior doors of the laboratory was open. As I was about to close it, I heard strange noises from a distant office, as if someone was groaning. I became curious and entered the building. Everywhere there was a smell of smoke, and I also noticed strange footprints on the floor, prints of dirty black feet. I decided that this was an invasion, but why did the alarm not go off? Suddenly, through the glass door, I saw a large black shadow. It was moving quickly. I decided that this was a robber, so I took out my rubber club and began to speak loudly so that he did not do anything stupid and that the police were already on the way. The robber stopped and, through the glass, began to watch me. At that moment, the groan stopped. I noticed that for the robber, his shadow was quite large, more than two meters. Also, he was completely black. I couldn't see him well due to the lighting, but it seemed to me that black smoke was coming from him. I was very scared and began to retreat back to the exit. I realized that this was not a robber and certainly not a human. At that moment, the smell of smoke intensified and the shadow began to slowly move towards the door. Without waiting for it to grab me, I started running as fast as I could. Even when I left the building and got into my car, even when I left the laboratory's territory, I continued to smell smoke. The next day I quit my job, but before I left, I met with the cleaner. We talked for a while until she mentioned why security guards don't stay here for more than two weeks. She stopped mid-sentence, 
saying that she shouldn't talk about it. But in the end, after my persuasion, she told the truth. According to her, there were cases when security guards went crazy. Some of them disappeared without a trace. And in the past month, two security guards were found dead. She said that she had spoken with some of them, and that all of them repeated the same thing. They were being pursued by the smell of smoke, and they saw a large shadow. I was shocked. According to her, I was lucky because this creature always stays in the shadows and attaches itself to those it frequently sees. In the end, security guards are the only ones who roam the laboratory's territory alone. They didn't let us negotiate. When the director heard our conversation, he strictly asked me to leave immediately and not come back. I did just that. But even now, a year later, sometimes the smell of smoke comes back to me, and I feel like someone is watching and waiting for me in the shadows.